Hey everyone, welcome to Cyber Platter. I am Navya. Today we are looking at advanced cyber security interview question and answers. So if you are preparing for a cyber security interview and you want to move beyond the basic question and answers, you are in the right place. We will discuss some real world question and answers today. This can help with various cyber security roles. For example, SOC engineers, incident responders, uh, security analysts, cloud specialists, pen testers and so on. This is part one of this series. I'll add links to the next parts in the description box as I upload them. So let's get started. First question, do you drop or reject a packet? So the answer to this depends on the situation because both of these are valid actions but they serve different purposes. First let's look at about dropping a packet. When a firewall drops a packet, it basically throws it away without saying anything back to the sender. So there is no error message, no rejection or nothing. It does not send any kind of response back to the sender. So from a sender's point of view, when a packet is dropped, it looks like the host might not exist, the port might be closed or the packet just vanished somewhere on the internet. This behavior is important because it makes your system less discoverable. So if an attacker is scanning your network or probing your ports, they can't easily tell whether there's something responding on the other side. That lack of information increases your security by making reconnaissance harder. So when do we usually drop packets? First, on internet facing firewalls where we don't want to reveal anything when traffic is suspicious or unknown, when we want to protect against reconnaissance, scanning or probing. Anytime stealth and security are the priority, we usually drop packets. Let's consider an example. Let's say someone from an unauthorized IP tries to SSH into your server. If the firewall drops the packet, they get no reply at all. To them, it is unclear whether SHS is blocked, the server is down or the host doesn't even exist. That ambiguity makes it much harder for an attacker to build an accurate map of your system. Now let's go to the concept of rejecting a packet. So when a firewall rejects a packet, it still blocks the traffic, but this time it actually sends a response back to the sender. This response could be something like an ICMP uh, destination unreachable message or a TCP reset message. So in other words, the firewall is saying, I got your request, but you are not allowed to access this. So the sender receives immediate feedback in this case and they know right away that the connection is blocked instead of waiting for a timeout or guessing what happened. When do we usually reject packets? So inside corporate networks where users are trusted or when dealing with authenticated or known clients. During troubleshooting, that is where quick feedback helps or when user experience matters. And anytime clarity is more important than hiding information. Let's consider an example for rejecting a package. So say a developer tries to access an internal service that they are not authorized for. The firewall can reject that package and that developer gets an instant message that the access is blocked. So there is no need for waiting. There is no confusion or no timeouts. So to summarize, drop is equal to security and stealth and reject is equal to usability and clarity. So you drop for external untrusted networks, you reject for internal trusted networks where users benefit from quick feedback. Let's go to the next question. What is beaconing? So this is a question that we are building up for the next one. So just bear with me. So let's talk about beaconing first. This is a really important concept in network security. Beaconing is when a host periodically sends outbound traffic to a C2 that is command and control server or another remote endpoint. 
Think of it like the host is checking in on a schedule. This can be malicious or benign. First, let's look at malicious beaconing. Now, in the context of malware, beaconing is a major red flag. Malware and backdoors often use beaconing to stay connected to the attacker. So the infected system, right? It usually sends small quiet signals to the attacker to let the attacker know that it is alive and ready for instructions. Let's look at some traits of malicious beaconing. First, low frequency signals so that they don't stand out. Very consistent intervals like for example 5 seconds, 10 seconds or 5 minutes. They often use DNS or HTTPS because those protocols blend in with normal traffic. How do you spot this malicious beaconing? So you look for patterns such as the same host repeatedly contacting the same domain or IP at perfectly regular intervals. And then you can also look at connections to low reputation domains, newly registered domains or dynamic DNS, DNS hosts. So these are some classic indicators of C2 activity. Now let's look at about benign beaconing. There are plenty of normal applications that behave the way that I just talked about malicious beaconing, but not all beaconing is malicious. For example, NTP, that is Network Time Protocol, this syncs time at regular intervals. Streaming services like Netflix or Spotify, they send heartbeats to keep sessions alive. Telemetry services such as Windows sending health or update checks. IoT devices that frequently check in with cloud platforms. All of these are benign beaconing. So the key difference is that benign beaconing usually is not perfectly consistent and it typically goes to trusted, well-known domains. Now, after knowing what is beaconing, malicious beaconing, benign beaconing, let's go to the next question, which is related. How to determine if periodic DNS queries are benign or C2 beaconing? First step is to check the frequency and regularity of the queries. Benign processes like software updates or telemetry usually query at irregular intervals or on predictable schedules like hourly or daily. C2 beacons often have very consistent timing like I mentioned before such as every 10 seconds or every minute or every 5 minutes. Highly regular timing is a big red flag. The next step is to check the reputation of the domain your system is contacting. So this helps you understand whether it is tied to a legitimate service or something potentially malicious like a C2 server. First look up basic information like for example who is details. So who owns the domain is the information complete or hidden. Next, look at the registration date. Newly registered domains are often used for short-lived attacks. Then look for DNS record history. That is, has the domain changed IPs frequently? Does it look unstable or inconsistent? Next, threat intel or blacklist checks. That is, many security feeds will flag known malicious domains. So benign domains usually show a long consistent registration history. Their ownership is very clear. It is usually by a well-known vendor or a company. They usually have transparent and legitimate who is details. So these are some of the strong signals that the traffic might be normal or part of a legitimate service. Then for a C2 or malicious domains, usually show the opposite. Like for example, very recent registration that is attackers spin up new domains constantly. Hidden or fake ownership that is masked uh, who is data or privacy protection services. Strange random looking names like on the screen. These are often auto-generated. Fast flux infrastructure, that is the domain rapidly switches IP addresses to avoid detection. 
when you combine this information with the timing pattern of the dns traffic right it becomes much easier to tell whether you are dealing with normal activity or potential malware beaconing next you want to look closely at which processes on the machine is generating the dns requests that is you are analyzing the endpoint that is making the queries so you need to ask what process is making the traffic is the executable signed by a legitimate vendor is it located where it should be for example windows processes and system 32 is the process using unusual cpu or memory so if you find a process that's unknown unsigned or running from a strange directory that's a major red flag legitimate software usually has proper signatures and lives in expected folders malware often tries to hide in temporary or obscure locations if you look at the actual dns queries themselves so c2 beaconing often has very recognizable patterns like for example random looking subdomains like you can see it on the screen high entropy names that look encoded or generated frequent requests to txt records which attackers sometimes use to hide commands very long domain names in contrast normal software tends to use predictable and very readable domains like for example update.microsoft.com if the dns traffic looks messy random or encoded that's a strong indicator of c2 activity dns is just the first step right so you also want to see what happens after the domain results like does the endpoint make an outbound http or https connection to the resolved ip are the connections short repetitive and low volume so c2 beacons typically call home that is the attacker send tiny bits of data and keep repeating this to maintain persistence so benign applications usually talk to known vendor networks like amazon aws google cloud or established company ip ranges and their traffic patterns make sense for their purpose next you look for related indicators on the host that is you can check for suspicious scheduled tasks recently modified executable or scripts persistent mechanisms like registry run keys unusual registry changes new services or auto run entries that should not be there so if you find beaconing and one or more of these that's strong confirmation of compromise finally always compare against what's normal for your network does this machine the endpoints normally communicate with this domain do other devices in the network talk to it also if only one machine is reaching out to a domain that nobody else in the organization touches that is suspicious benign services usually appear across multiple devices malicious domains often appear on one compromised endpoint so to summarize all of this you can say to determine if periodic dns queries are benign or c2 beaconing you can look at the timing domain reputation originating process query patterns follow up network traffic and host indicators benign traffic is irregular and tied to known software c2 traffic usually shows consistent timing unknown domains encoded subdomains and follow up connections follow up connections to suspicious ip addresses so that is how you answer this question 
so that's it for today guys i will see you in part two of advanced cyber security interview question and answers if you like today's video please don't forget to like subscribe and share our videos that helps us a lot thank you so much for watching i'll see you soon bye bye